Inside Bobcat Football is sponsored by HEB, Bud Light, and Central Texas Medical Center. Down the sideline, inside the 40, they will not catch him today. This week at Inside Bobcat Football, we have a full recap of Rivalry Week with all the highlights between the Bobcats and Roadrunners from San Antonio. Plus an inside look at the battle of the trenches with the Bobcat defensive line and the 4-1-1 on recruiting here at Texas State. But first, here's Bill with Bobcat head coach, Dennis Francione. Welcome to the show, Coach Fran. Here we are in the Champions Club at Bobcat Stadium where this upcoming Saturday, this room will be wall to wall full of, of Bobcat fans. First, let's take a look back, though, at the game down in San Antonio against the Roadrunners. At the Alamo Dome, over 39,000 fans on hand, including many thousands of, of Bobcat fans. Uh, it was the atmosphere, I think, that we all expected. It was a real rivalry game feel. It was. It was a really good atmosphere, a loud crowd, and uh, a great uh, venue to play uh, football in on that day. Go, um, go into the game uh, early on, the Bobcats fall behind, and then Sean Rutherford, who I thought was outstanding on Saturday, he hooks up with Isaiah Battle for a 57-yard pass, catch, and run. Isaiah's been so good this season. As a matter of fact, on Saturday, Isaiah, seven catches for 119 yards. If you would, take us through that play that got the Bobcats back into the game, and, and if you would, talk about Isaiah's performance on Saturday. Well, it was a, a play-action pass with a double post by the wide receivers, and we really thought we would get the outside post, but uh, Isaiah ran such a good route and beat his guy. And uh, Sean actually looked at Isaiah first, the, the wide receiver second, and came back to Isaiah, who was wide open, and uh, the protection was good, and uh, Sean made a really nice throw. And uh, Isaiah seems to have a way of making the tough catches, and, and that was not an easy catch, and he made it, and uh, he made a great run. Uh, Sean and, and Isaiah are probably the two guys on our offense that are uh, the epitome of, of toughness physically, mentally. Uh, Isaiah made a number of tough, hard-nosed football plays for us on Saturday, and certainly Sean did too, and that was a, that was a great hookup by them. Uh, you just used the word tough. It was certainly a tough day for the Bobcat defense uh, against the Roadrunners. And going back and looking at the film, what was UTSA doing offensively that w was creating the challenges? I think the biggest thing, we had a hard time at the line of scrimmage, and, and that's kind of a common theme for us this year. If we have a hard time at the line of scrimmage, we have other struggles that we develop, and uh, that was basically what happened up front. And uh, this D-line has gotten a little beat up and as the seasons wore on, and um, you know, they're, they're still fighting hard, and I thought our team fought hard the entire game, and, um, you know, we just came up a little short. All right, Coach, go into the locker room, down by 10. Still very much a ball game. We'll step aside right here, and we'll take a look at the first half highlights. The rally cry for the Bobcats all week was to chain the gates as they prepared to face I-35 rivals from San Antonio, the UTSA Roadrunners. And with a crowd of nearly 40,000 at the Animal Dome, emotions were riding high for the Bobcats. UTSA had the ball first and were looking to get an early jump on the Bobcats, but the defense stiffened up near the red zone, holding the runners to a field goal. Later in the first, and now trailing UTSA 10-0, the Bobcats go to work at offense and face with third and six, Sean Rutherford bullets a pass to Brandon Smith for nine yards to keep the drive alive. Next play, Rutherford off the play fake looks downfield for Isaiah Battle, who already has touchdown catches of 98 and 62 yards and comes up with another big play, streaking to the end zone for a 57-yard score, cutting the UTSA lead to 10-7. Later in the quarter, Rutgers quarterback Eric Sosa dumps a pass over the middle to Cam Jones, who's hit hard by Jamie Clavell head, but UTSA still scores in the drive, pulling in front 17-7. It's up to the Bobcat offense to respond again, and Rutherford gets a drive started with an 11-yard pass to Bradley Miller. And on the next play, the senior quarterback connects with Andy Erickson, who turns upfield for 14 yards to the 50-yard line before being lassoed out of bounds by Darian Starling. The score is still UTSA 17, Texas State 7 in the second quarter. Rutherford floats a pass perfectly to Terrence Franks for 25 yards and five plays later the Bobcats face with second and six from the UTSA 37. Rutherford calls his own number and knifes through the runner's defense for 17 yards and another first down. The Bobcats senior quarterback was masterful on the drive accounting for 66 of the 75 yards and caps it off by diving into the end zone and cutting UTSA's lead to 17-14. 
Late in the second quarter, the runners back at offense, and Sosa tries to run up the middle, but is dragged down from behind by Chase Harper. UTSA scores a late touchdown, however, to go back in front by 10. The Bobcats attempt to get a late score of their own, but are unable to cut any further into the runners' lead as we come to halftime from the Alamo Dome with the score UTSA 24, Texas State 14. After the break, we'll talk about the Bobcats' defensive line. First half highlights are brought to you by HEB. Right now, inside every HEB, certified meat cutters are working for you. You may not see them, but you'll see their work. All that fresh, 100% pure beef with nothing added but skill and devotion. Others may have guys stocking meat trucked in from who knows where. Is that fresh? No siree, Bob. This is what a real HEB meat cutter looks like at work and at play. No store does more to bring you great beef at low prices than HEB. In the Western Athletic Conference, we play up. It's how we define sportsmanship. And it begins with every player, every coach, and every fan. Because everything we do rises from the foundation of our character. Playing up comes from honesty, dedication, and hard work. Play up is sportsmanship in action, in every game, every day. That's what the Western Athletic Conference is made of. Play up. Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box puts all your favorites in one epic box so you can build the perfect dinner. The best part, how you fill it is up to you. For a limited time, get two medium one-topping pizzas, five breadsticks with marinara, and your choice of wings, Tuscany pasta, or four stuffed pizza rollers. All just $19.99. And right now, when you order the big dinner box online, score a free two liter Pepsi. Only at your Pizza Hut. Make it great. How do you show your Bobcat pride? Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State. Because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more. Online or in the heart of Bobcat Country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State, your bookstore. play on the defensive line here at Texas State, the coaches are asking for one thing and ask for the players to get a little nasty. Blake McCullough, uh, Deshaun Williams, Jamie Clavel Head, um, Kamuta Lele, and Jordan Northfleet. Those are the base guys that we've been working with in there uh, that are getting better every day. We'd like for them to continue to get more better. Uh, but uh, Jamie's done a really good job for the last three weeks, uh, stepping up and getting a lot of snaps. Proper alignment, proper assignment, no way on the edge, okay? Make sure of your fits, make sure of your fits, okay? Right, so got Coach Hudson can take the defense in, I take defense attack, and we can work on different stuff because this game, the offensive game plan has changed so dramatically over the years where the style of play is so different for an end. He's going to see about five or six different things that inside interior, I may only see two or three. The core, as I call it, of an offense is roughly the same. The, old, the, the center and the guards, they're only going to do so much. And so that's why it's so vital for us inside to be so disruptive to make the ends shine. So when it's time to rush the passion, those ends can get up the field and, and just really rush and force the quarterback up to the D tackle. And D tackles can get sacked. <laughs> Well, the biggest technique that we're coaching those guys is getting in a great stance and getting able to get off the ball fast so they can cause havoc because that's what you want to have. You want to have a guy inside that's going to cause disruption, disruption to the, with the guards and the tackles so we can, uh, you know, not only just stop the run, but at the same time apply pressure to the quarterback. Even if you don't sack him, get the quarterback out of his, out of his normal groove and make him have to move around. 82, 90, 305. If you're not driving him back, it's going to be a long day for you. Or short and technically. Here we go. Right here. Ready. Quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick, quick. Set. Hit. You know, you got to study your guy you're going against. You got to know what he likes to do when he reach blocks, what he likes to do when he down blocks, what is, what's his strongest attributes in his past pro production, 
what are his weaknesses. You got to know the guy you're going against, uh, and uh, you know that's that's the big deal when you're talking about defensive line play. Well, first of all, we like for him to be nasty, and uh, we need more of that, uh, quite frankly. And uh, we want to be as big as they can, as fast as they can, as strong as they can, and to be able to uh, def defeat, defeat blocks. And uh, that's what we're looking for. You know, I saw Mean Joe Green in here the other day. Uh, you know, the commitment of nastiness, uh, it's something you're born with. You know, a defensive lineman is a different guy. Uh, and uh, you either have it or you don't. It doesn't matter if you're a defensive tackle or defensive end, you want to be a nasty individual in your play. I mean, it's still legal, still be a good player, but you just want to be nasty. When, they, when a team turns on the field and watch you, they want to say, ooh, that's a nasty defensive line right there. Bobcat Profiles is sponsored by Central Texas Medical Center. Not all ground beef is created equal, and the difference is this guy. The certified meat cutter you'll find at every HEB. Grinding the best beef in Texas, fresh in the store, several times every day. Not shipping it in from, well, wherever. It's so fresh, there's a darn good chance your beef left the grinder after you left the house. A miracle? No. To these guys, it's just the daily grind. No store does more to bring you great ground beef at low prices than HEB. Hey. Who's that? Oh, that's Rob. When I uh, lived in this apartment, the 49ers won the Super Bowl. I used to watch every game from this exact, this exact spot. This exact spot. I didn't know what else to do. This is my lucky seat, man. Hmm. The team needs me, man. Bud Light, for the fans who do whatever it takes. Second half highlights are sponsored by Bud Light. After an early turnover, the Bobcats trail UTSA early in the second half, 31-14. Despite a promising start to another drive, the Bobcats punt the ball back to the runners, but they wouldn't wait long to get it back. UTSA quarterback Eric Sosa throws against the grain of the pass is picked off by Jamie Clavell Head. His third career interception sets the Bobcats up with first and 10 of the UTSA, 32. Four plays into the drive, Weatherford glances at the defense and after a quick three-step drop, drills a pass to Chase Harper towards the sideline for a gain of nine. The Bobcats end up settling for a 23-yard field goal from Will Johnson, who puts the ball right through the uprights, cutting UTSA's lead at 31-17. Next drive for UTSA, and Eric Sosa, who had thrown one interception all season, is about to throw a second in as many passes as he's picked off again, this time by Daryl Morris, the fifth career INT for the San Antonio native, gives the Cats the ball inside of midfield. First play after the turnover. Weatherford runs the option and on the keeper, the Bobcat quarterback picks up 13 yards for a first down of the runner's 36-yard line. Four plays later and second to go from the sixth, Weatherford hands off to Terrence Franks who bursts into the end zone for the touchdown. Texas State turns two UTSA turnovers at a 10 points, joined within 31-24 late in the third quarter. Next UTSA possession, Sosa hands off to Evans Okachi who has a big hole on the left side, but the gap is closed quickly as Daryl Morris comes in and delivers a big time hit preventing a first down. Now in the fourth quarter, same drive for UTSA at Okacha again with a carry and again on the receiving end of a big hit, this one from Craig Meger. 
Later in the fourth, the Cats trailing 38-24. The defense desperate to make a stop. Joplo Bartu stops David Glasgow for one of his team high 13 tackles. Four plays later, Sosa hands off to receiver Cam Jones, who throws the ball into the end zone, but the pass is picked off by Colby Targan for the defense's third interception. The Bobcats have new life, but are faced with fourth and nine of their own 43. Rutherford comes through with a big completion of Brandon Smith for a first down of the UTSA 46. Later in the drive, Rutherford delivers again, this time with an 11-yard strike to Deshae Milburn of the UTSA 15. Next play, Rutherford of the hurry-up offense fires a laser into Smith, who fights off several UTSA defenders on his way to the end zone for his first career touchdown, cutting the lead to 38-31. But the Bobcats' comeback falls short as they lose a heartbreaker in their first ever meeting with the Roadrunners. The final score from the Alamo Dome, UTSA 38, Texas State 31. Coach, going into the game on Saturday, Eric Souza, UTSA's quarterback, had thrown just one interception all season. And there in the second half, Jamie Clavel Head, Daryl Morris, and also Colby Targan came up with big interceptions. Uh, that's been a common theme throughout the season. One of the many bright spots is the defense's ability to get the ball away from the other guys. They did a good job on that. Uh, he had gone a long time. In fact, I think he was the leading passer in the nation without throwing an interception consecutively. And uh, Daryl made a great play on his. Daryl seems to fall down after he makes an interception, but at least he made the interception. Uh, I remember the one at San Jose. And Jamie really made a nice read on the tight end throwback screen and stepped in there and made a good play. And uh, Colby Targans actually wasn't an interception of the quarterback. The wide receiver came around. It was kind of a gadget play. And, Colby did a nice job of, of being in the right place at the right time and making a great play on the football. As we went through the, the second half on Saturday, it, it seemed like the Roadrunners would score and the Bobcat offense would answer right back, and it was that kind of a, a feel to the game in the second half. How, how tough is it for an offense or a play caller when you feel like you have to score every time you have the ball? Well, it's... it's uh, not the way you want it to be. You'd like to be able to get the ad somewhere in there and, and be able to have a, have the ball and the, and the lead. We never had that on Saturday. But our offense did a nice job of answering for the most part, even though we weren't able to rush the football as well as we would have liked to have. We threw the ball fairly well, and, and the guys found ways to make plays. And uh, Sean made some fantastic throws. Terrence Franks made a great catch coming out of the backfield. And um, Brandon Smith really made a great play to score a touchdown late there. So um, at, at least we, we were able to throw the ball pretty well. Brandon Smith, you, you just mentioned his name uh, against Navy a couple of weeks ago, a half a dozen catches for the true freshman. And, and you talked about it on Saturday, four big catches, including the final touchdown for the Bobcats. He, he's a part of the bright future of this program, isn't he? He is. Uh, he has really had a fantastic freshman year. and. Uh, he needs time in the weight room now, and he needs time to get, to get bigger and stronger. Uh, but uh, he's a pretty smooth, fluid receiver. Uh, our guys know that and acknowledge that. He runs good routes, and he, he's made some tough, tough catches. All right, Coach, a, a rivalry game. The Bobcats don't quite get over the hump on Saturday. Uh, what do you tell the guys to, to keep their you know, emotions up, chins up, shoulders back? Well, we're fortunate we've got another game, um, I think. Uh, and, and, you know, this game is special because it's the seniors' last game, last home game, uh, last opportunity to wear the maroon and gold. And uh, we have 15 of them that have been through two years of um, really transition football uh, in so many ways and, and have done a magnificent job of uh, weathering that and, and uh, going through it and being leaders through it. And, uh, I would hope our fans will, will really acknowledge these seniors for what they've done and what they've gone through uh, in this process as we've made the transition from FCS to FBS football. All right, Coach, we're going to sneak away for a moment. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk more about the matchup with the New Mexico State Aggies. Coming up, we'll hit the recruiting trail with Bobcat football. Hey Bobcat fans, like us on Facebook and follow us at TX State Bobcats on Twitter. Keep up to date, learn new things, and win free stuff. Innovation. Exploration. Creative discovery. These are the trademarks of Texas State University. 
As the state's newest emerging research university, we're transforming your world one mind at a time. Your world, our research. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. Welcome to Bud Light Fantasy Football, where every bottle is a player. My Bud Light threw for four TDs. Draft players using codes on specially marked bottles of Bud Light. Mine won the game with a 60-yard field goal. Manage your team at BudLight.com slash FFL. My Bud Light fumbled at the three-yard line. My Bud Light extended my winning streak. When Bud Light is on your roster, every game is a win. My Bud Light made him cry. Bud Light Fantasy Football. Start building your team today. Coach, we already talked about it, the, the regular season finale for 2012 coming up this Saturday. It's going to be T Association weekend, senior day. We already talked about what a great group of seniors you have on, on this season's football team. Now let's talk about the Aggies. Uh, New Mexico State haven't, of course, gotten the wins that they wanted to get this season, but what do they try to do offensively? What's going to be the challenge for the Bobcat defense this Saturday? You know, they've got a good quarterback who throws the ball really well, and they've got a couple of receivers that are definite threats to hit home runs. And uh, their line does a decent job of protecting them, even though they've given up some sacks. They've thrown it a, a number of times. Uh, and so, it, you know, containing the quarterback and, and staying on top of those two receivers are going to present plenty of challenges. All right, now the other side, Coach. When the Bobcats have the football, you've looked at film on New Mexico State. What might be available on Saturday? Well, this is a, a multiple defense that, uh, you know, their their identity, I think, right now is to give you so many looks that it, it confuses you, and they do that a good job of that at times. And you're not quite sure what you're going to get from them until game day because they've, they've got enough different combinations of odd and even fronts that they can pose problems for you just in uh, knowing all your assignments and recognition. This is like taking a comprehensive final on Saturday. Let's stay on the offensive side of the ball. We've talked about Sean Rutherford during the show, during the radio broadcast, the coaches show all season long. What has Sean meant to this football team? You know, uh, this, this is Sean's team in a way. Uh, he's been a great leader. He's been a quiet leader. He's led by example. He's been a tremendously hard worker. Uh, he loves and cares about his team and his program and the Bobcat Nation and uh, his teammates. Um, you know, and, and really week in and week out, his play has given us a chance to be in every football game just about. And uh, he's minimized his mistakes this year from last year a great deal. Uh, we're plus in turnover margin this year, uh, which is a, is a statistic that falls obviously heavily on his shoulders. And uh, he's been very cautious with the football. Sometimes I wish he would go ahead and take that throw or something, but that's okay. He's if he doesn't feel good about it, he's been protective of it, and as a result of that, being plus in turnover margin has helped us to stay in every game. I agree with all of that, Coach. And on that note, Saturday, New Mexico State will be here, and good luck. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you. All right. To be honest with you, if you look at San Marcos, it doesn't take much to lure a kid uh, because this is a beautiful place. You know, it doesn't matter if it's in the fall, spring, or summer. It's, it's just a beautiful place. Uh, but the process works, you know, when they're getting to high school, obviously, uh, playing varsity, you know, we get to go out in the spring and get a chance to evaluate some, some schools and some talent. And uh, plus with the internet now, with all the video that's available, we really get a lot of good film time. And so we can evaluate the, pl the players. And then when we get out in the spring, we get a chance to go by and see the schools and see the players. Uh, to get a physical look, you know, get an eye on the player. 
so that part is, is huge. Um, and then we get to follow up during the fall. And so you do that. Plus in the summertime, what's also so important are the camps. Uh, to be able to see the players, whether it's a travel camp or they're coming to our camp or campus, those things are huge because you get a chance to see those players. You get to actually work with them uh, during that time. So you get to see how they respond. You get to see how coachable they are. And so the, all those things right there are huge. So I look at all positions. And it, does, it doesn't just start once they become a senior. It starts as soon as they enter as a, as, in a high school. If they're playing football, if, they're, if their coach gives me their list, give me a name on the list, hey, this is a guy you need to look at, I'll start following them. It doesn't matter if they're a freshman or a sophomore. If they get on varsity, I'm watching because that's where you get your film from. So we have to, we have to start early. This recruiting process is just, it gets so early. Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box puts all your favorites in one epic box so you can build the perfect dinner. The best part, how you fill it is up to you. For a limited time, get two medium one-topping pizzas, five breadsticks with marinara, and your choice of wings, Tuscany pasta, or four stuffed pizza rollers. All just $19.99. And right now, when you order the Big Dinner Box online, score a free two-liter Pepsi. Only at your Pizza Hut. Make it great. How do you show your Bobcat pride? Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State. Because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more. Online or in the heart of Bobcat country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State, your bookstore. joins us from the Bobcat foot, football radio play-by-play -play booth this past Saturday. Brant at the Alamo Dome. Coach Fran and I kind of talked about it. What an outstanding atmosphere for college football. Well, absolutely. You know, nearly 40,000 fans at the Alamo Dome. The fact the game was played on rivalry weekend in college football, same weekend as USC, Notre Dame, Auburn, and Alabama, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, really added to the atmosphere of that football game Thanksgiving weekend. Um, Really the shame of it, though, is the fact that we may not see this game again at the earliest for another four years because of scheduling. You and I talked about it during the radio broadcast on Saturday. That's the kind of game you want to play every year. The Bobcats had their opportunities throughout the afternoon, and it just seemed like when a play needed to be made, most times it was UT San Antonio coming up with a big play. But who did come up with a lot of plays for the Bobcats was Sean Weatherford, 31 to 42 passing, career high, 324 yards. Uh, threw for two touchdowns, ran for another. Just a Warriors effort against UTSA on Saturday, trying to will the team to a win, ultimately came up short. You heard Coach Fran talk about it. Sean has been the consummate leader, not just for the offense, but the entire football team. You see it in practice. You see it in the games themselves. And some other guys, Joplo Bartu, when you add in the fact that Joplo's older brother, Wellington DeShield, played here, we've known Joplo for a decade, and he is a class individual outstanding football player Marcus Curry has meant so much to the program in his time here even though of course he had the injury a few years back and there are a laundry list of other guys other seniors who have laid the foundation for this football program as Texas State moves along in the world of FBS. You want to give them a, a proper send-off this Saturday New Mexico State comes to Bobcat Stadium the Aggies are one in ten they've lost ten straight since winning the season opener over Sacramento State. So there's no hiding that they've struggled this year. They rank at or at the near the bottom of every major stat category in the FBS. That all said, the Bobcats cannot walk into this game Saturday against the Aggies and expect to roll over them. Well, I go back to what we talked about this past Saturday. You looked at the schedule, and for the most part, the Bobcats have the ability to beat anybody on their schedule. Also, there's the potential to lose to anybody on the 2012 schedule as well. And there are two games for New Mexico State that kind of stand out for me. They hung around with New Mexico, and as you recall, Brant, they lost to Louisiana Tech, but it was just by two touchdowns. Well, Bill, we're looking forward to it on Saturday. We hope to see you there as well. Kickoff at 3 o'clock from Bobcat Stadium this Saturday between Texas State and New Mexico State. For everybody on Inside Bobcat Football, I'm Brant Freeman reminding you that United We Fan. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.
Inside Bobcat Football is sponsored by HEB, Bud Light, and Central Texas Medical Center.